Today I'm going to be introducing you to a new series on my channel called Wargaming in a Weekend. The premise of this series is to show you creative and hopefully cheaper ways to jump into that wargaming hobby. This is technically considered sponsored content because the good boys and girls at Atlas sent me these two Elegoo Mars 2 printers as well as a bunch of resin to test out for their Kickstarter that is currently live. We're just buddies and they were going to send this stuff to me anyway, but the video content that I wanted to create for this series happens to line up perfectly with something that they offer on their Kickstarter. The purpose of this first video is to show if you have a 3D printer, or if you don't, I'll show how much that costs too, how you and a friend can get started in the wargaming hobby with two starter armies. This is a simple way for you to try out this hobby to see if it's something that you like instead of spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars on an army just to see if it's a hobby that you like and find out that maybe it's not for you. Before I explain how to get this stuff, because that's very easy, let me tell you what I'm doing right now. I'm printing off two armies with two 3D printers because I have them in a single single day, which means you can print out both of these armies in one single weekend. These armies are going to be fantasy themed because I prefer fantasy over sci-fi, one of which is going to be an Egyptian mummy style skeleton army, which I think is super rad, and all I have to do is clean these off with some alcohol, take the supports off, cure them, and I have fully functional minis. And the quality on these things with how good 3D printing is nowadays is absolutely fantastic. The second army has slightly less units, but it's an army of armored lizard men that ride armored velociraptors into war, which may just be the coolest sentence anybody can ever say. The process for curing these is the exact same for the other army and kind of basic 3D printing stuff. This isn't going to go into detail for that, but while we're doing that process, we can be printing off even more units, saving us time to where this truly becomes a weekend project. Now, some of you Wargaming Warhammer fans might be screaming at your TV, that's, that, that's Tomb Kings and that's Seraphim, those are Warhammer proxies, and we'll be touching on that at the end of the video, I promise. But for now, I want to show you how easy it is with models that are pre supported in kits that are made for armies like this, how easy it is to get into the wargaming hobby. You can break supports off just like this because they make pre-supported models all over the place and armies just like that. This army happens to be made by one page rules and they are awesome. But again, you don't have to try them out. I'm just showing you one opportunity to get this army exactly how I'm doing it and try something out in a wargaming mode. You can do whatever you want. You could take a piece of paper that shows, hey, this is that unit and I attack. But to me, half of wargaming is seeing the cool models on the table and immersing yourself into this epic large scale fight. And you can't really do that trying it out with just pieces of paper. So maybe we can try it out this way. And with 3D printing looking as good as it does, because I think it looks as good, if not better in some cases than traditional injection molding models, why not try it this way? You can ask any modeler, they're going to say skeletons are the hardest thing to model for 3D printing. But with the golden age of 3D printing that we're in, it's easy for modelers to make it so that they work and come out right every time and cheap too. Too. And with the community finding out cool things like water-based curing make more durable prints, I'd say that most of my prints nowadays are more durable than injection molded prints. Okay, so I've talked about 3D printing as a whole and why I think it's a great way to start getting into wargaming, but now I'm going to talk about the specific product and why I think it's an amazing opportunity to really jumpstart you into the wargaming hobby. Atlas actually asked me not to talk about the Vulcan resin because they wanted the quality to speak for itself, but I do want to talk about some things and why I think that this resin is a great place to start for both beginners and experts in 3D printing. First off, I can smell absolutely nothing coming from this resin, which is a huge deterrent for a lot of people getting into 3D printing, and it prints lightning fast. I'm able to print at exposure times of 3.7 seconds on my Elegoo Mars 2, and I even asked them why are the supports easier to remove, and they said that they designed this resin around tabletop miniature printing, not just regular 3D printing. But okay, yeah, whatever. It's a quality resin for 3D printing. There's a million quality resins out there, some of them even cheaper than this. So why am I talking about this specific resin and Kickstarter for getting into wargaming. Honestly, it's because their business model lines up with a perfect way for people to start out in the hobby. Whenever you buy their resin, you get a coin that entitles you to one free miniature from the people that they work with. Or if you pay like eight bucks more, you get something called a release from them by spending five coins, which includes a ton of miniatures like these two armies that I'm printing. That right there is called a circular narrative, and if you get the King's Wrath release, you get this starter set that comes with both of those armies, as well as an entire rulebook for a standalone wargaming game. They're called one-page rules, even though this rulebook is 25 pages, because everything you need to know when you're actually playing the game is on this one single front and back page. It comes with stats for all the minis and is a great way for people to learn wargaming. 
streaming. This deal was a great way to start off this series, and I just happened to know the owners, so I got to work with friends whenever I started this off as well. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard One Page Rules is only offering this King's Wrath set via these Atlas coins. They have other things that they're offering and other sets that are very, very similar, but this specific set is only being offered with this resin, and I think the combination of the deal with the resin and getting all of these minis is what I wanted to be able to show off as something that's an incredible way to start. So let's do a little cost breakdown analysis as to why I think this is a better way to find out if you like wargaming rather than paying so much for the traditional way to get started. Let's say I only printed out the 50 models required for this starter set with the resin I had and then just threw the rest of the resin away, which I would have enough resin to print out probably 200 plus models with a kilogram and a half. Well, all of that was $64, as we saw before, and I've already shown you how to make your own resin bases if you need some of those, or you could just 3D print them with all of that extra resin that we quote-unquote threw away. So if we compare that to buying, let's say, Space Marines from getting started in the wargaming the traditional way, 10 Space Marines is 51 51 and that's on sale, it's $51. So to get 50 minis, that would cost you $250, or you could buy that package and your own 3D printer, the same 3D printer that I used, and print a ton more minis. Now, you could say that there are hidden costs associated with 3D printing that make it more expensive, but come on with that argument. Man, there's so many other things that you have to do if you buy Wargaming the traditional way. Just buying the book to be able to use certain armies costs like $40. That's crazy. Now, we haven't even talked about using these as proxies for other armies in games like Warhammer. That's a whole different ethical discussion that we're not going to get into here, but you can do that, especially with friends. These skeletal ones are perfect Tomb King proxies, which I don't think has any ethical problems because they're out of prints, and the Lizard Folks are perfect Saurus proxies. I think 3D printed proxies are perfectly fine if you're just playing with friends. Now, if you go to something like a Warhammer tournament, of course you should use Warhammer models. Most tournaments wouldn't let you win with proxies anyway, and it's not fair to those who did spend the money on the models. Now, if you want, we can talk about that in a future video, but Danny, the 3D printing DM, whom I love, by the way, mwah, he already did a video on the subject of proxy armies, and though I don't agree with everything that he says, there's great discussion both in the video and in the comments and you should check it out. But this series is largely going to be about playing with your friends, so we are going to talk about proxies pretty often. But remember, I'm just showing you one way to get into wargaming with 3D printing in this episode. There's a billion different websites that offer free STLs like Wargaming 3D, Thingiverse, and My Mini Factory. So I hope that you're excited for this series because in the next episode I'm going to show you how you go about creating proxy armies with your friends and we're going to make a huge demon army. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss that. Like the video if you like it, dislike it if you disliked it, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.